Okay, so you're a Christian. You know that Bible reading is very important to your spiritual growth. But sometimes you can admit it that when you read the Bible, you do not get that deep insight or newness that you hear others talking about. Sometimes, especially because you're reading the same story, you know the story very well, and you're coming to read it again, and you're wondering, okay, I mean, I'm just doing this as a duty, but really I'm not feeling anything. But in this video, I want to share with you 10 things that you can do to help deepen your insight, to deepen your connection with the scripture each time you read it. Welcome to Devotional Digest. I'm Damian Chambers, and on this channel, I share with you content that will help you to grow spiritually. If you haven't yet done so, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get more content about how to grow spiritually. Welcome. Okay, out of these 10 things that I'll share with you, the last three are the most important. So please stick around to the end of this video. The first thing that you can do to help deepen your understanding of scripture and, and your, your ability to gain new insight into the word is to read about the customs and manners of the people in the Bible. You can read about their educational system, their way of life, food they eat, how they live. You see, the events in the Bible took place in a local situation, time, and context. And in order for you to appreciate the intention of the author in giving this message to the people, the instructions that God gave him, it's important that you understand that local situation. You can find information about this Bible land and situation by reading Bible commentaries, Bible dictionaries. What this does for you is that when you're reading the Bible, you can picture in your mind how the people experience what the prophets spoke to them. Besides understanding the culture of the people, it's also important to understand the setting or the circumstances surrounding that particular instruction and counsel that the apostle or prophet is giving. One of the main sources for this type of information is the Bible itself. So for example, the writings of the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel will find their contexts and situations recorded in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. Specifically, the book of Jeremiah, you would find his talking to Israel and to the kings of Israel who lived just before the captivity of the kingdom of Judah. Those you'll find in the books of 2 Kings chapters 24 through to 25. You'd get to read about the kings who would have heard the preaching of Jeremiah. In the New Testament, you would read about, for example, in the book of Acts, the circumstances surrounding some of the churches that the Apostle Paul wrote to. For example, Ephesus, Corinth, Galatian, Galatia, and even Rome. Outside of the Bible now, in the case of Bible prophecy, you would find some information in the Bible as well as in the historical record of the church and the kingdoms that the prophets spoke about. For example, Daniel spoke about four key empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, You'll read about their history from biblical as well as extra biblical sources that will help you to gain insight into what the prophet was talking about. The third thing that you can do to improve the insight that you will develop or gain from reading the Bible is to study the geography of the situation that you're reading about. For example, when I'm reading the book of Acts or the Gospels, I always love to check there on the maps to see where the person is, where Jesus is right now, where the Apostle Paul is. For example, I'm reading the book of Acts right now, and in Acts chapter 16, we read about a situation where God gave a vision to the Apostle Paul through a man who is calling him over to Macedonia to help. Now, Paul, when he got that vision, he was located somewhere in Antioch where he attempted to preach the gospel in Asia but the Holy Spirit forbade him. And as soon as he got the vision, the Bible says, loosing from Troas, he came straightway to Thracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi. Philippi is a chief city of Macedonia. 
And there in Philippi, he worshipped God with Lydia on the Sabbath. After spending some time in Philippi, the Apostle Paul and his companion went to Thessalonica. And he preached the gospel there in the synagogue of the Jews. And when they became boisterous, he went to Beria and preached the gospel there. And when the folks in, in Thessalonica came and caused trouble in Beria, he went on to Athens. So you can see and follow Paul in his journey and see the distance that he had to travel with preaching the gospel. The fourth thing that you can do to gain insight into the scriptures beyond the surface reading is to study a little about the original languages of the Bible. The Bible in its entirety was written in three languages, Hebrew and Aramaic for the Old Testament and Greek for the New Testament. And even more interestingly, the Old Testament was also very early translated into Greek. Now, this might sound a little daunting for persons who are not Bible scholars, but there are tools that can help you. For example, the Bible that I use, the Hebrew Greek study Bible, it gives the words, the, the key words are given their meaning. So it will give me a number here, and then I can go to the back and find that number in the, in the Greek. And I see the meaning of the text of that word. I'll see the transliteration of the word and then the meaning of the word. For example, in this case, Jesus asks Peter, Lovest thou me more than these? And I am going to go to number 25 in the Greek. And I, when I look and find number 25, I notice that the word is agapeo, to love, oh, right? But later down in verse 17, the third time when Jesus asks, lovest thou me? It is not 25, it is 5,368. So I need to go and find what that word means, 5,368. It's called phileo. It's another word for love. But this time it's not agapeo. It is phileo, which means brotherly love. And you can read about it there. So this helped me to use the original language to get a deeper insight into exactly what Jesus is asking Peter to do. Another way that you can gain deeper insight into the scripture, into your Bible reading, is to read from different versions of the Bible. Reading from different versions of the Bible is not just a matter of getting different types of reading, which is a, is a very good thing to do. For example, I, I use a King James Version, but my, for my Bible reading, I use the English Standard Version because it's a clearer English. But another reason for using different versions is that each translation of the Bible have a different philosophy because the Bible scholars who, who do translation and textual criticism, they have thousands of manuscripts to relate to and also at least four different traditions of texts that they need to use in their translation. So you need a combination of versions to get the full picture and the full meaning behind the scripture. One of my most interesting suggestions to you is that you need to look at how other people interpret the passage that you're reading. Now, there are three ways that you can do this. Number one is that you can first look at how other Bible or other persons in the Bible interpret the passage. For example, the Old Testament was written before the persons who lived in the New Testament. Matter of fact, the people who lived in the New Testament, their Bible was the Old Testament. So it is interesting to see how they interpreted the passages of the, of the Old Testament. There are several examples I can mention. Jesus is the prime person, interpreter of scripture. You have, for example, Philip, uh, when, when he asked the Ethiopian eunuch, who was reading Isaiah 53, the eunuch asked him, who is this man talking about? And Philip, from there, taught him about Jesus. You have another example in the book of Acts, 
that is where you find the apostles Peter, Paul, and then the, the deacon Stephen preaching the Old Testament story. For example, Stephen preached a long sermon in Acts chapter 7, where he covers both the stories of Moses and Joseph. What those sermons help with is not just filling in details sometimes that are not in the Old Testament itself, but, but it also helps you to understand how they interpreted and view those passages in their time. The second way to find out how others interpret that particular passage is by looking in history beyond the Bible. For example, the early church fathers, you can go to the 1st century, 2nd century, 3rd century, right up until the Protestant Reformation and the colonial period. You can study what some of these theologians, how they view that particular passage. And finally, you can use contemporary Bible commentary to see how others read the passage, not to replace your thoughts or to replace your efforts in Bible study, but to clarify points and to gain deeper insight into how others view it. Because sometimes people may look at the text from an angle that you were not looking at it from, and it helps to gain deeper insight. Suggestion number seven to help you gain deeper insight into Bible study is get a good Bible software or a good study Bible. Currently, as I mentioned earlier, I use the Hebrew Greek study Bible. It's getting very old. I've had this Bible from 20, 2003. But I also have been using for the past 10 to 12 years the Logos Bible software. These Bible software and study Bible help with word meanings, background information, even, for example, the Logos, it, it is very helpful with giving you maps and, and geography and, and background information on, that, on a particular passage. Once I'm reading that passage, it gives me information on the other side about what's happening in the passage. It gives me background information on the persons in the passage and so on. So these software are very helpful. The, I, I have done a couple of videos well on Logos by itself on how to use it. You can uh, look at those videos. Now I've come to the final three ways in which you can improve your ability to gain insight from the scripture. These for me are the most important ones. The others are very helpful, but these are the most important. Number one, or number eight, <laughs> is that you should pray. <laughs> the Bible is a spiritual book, and I believe that the best source of inspiration, insight, and illumination is by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who inspired the Bible writers, and He will inspire you. The key thing about working with the Holy Spirit is that you don't attempt to force the Holy Spirit to give you insight. Take the Word of God as it says, and the Holy Spirit in its own time and in its own way will, will inspire you with deeper insight based upon what you need for that time. But you must pray and ask God for that insight and he will surely help you. I have never, as a preacher of the word, I have never been disappointed when I go to God in prayer and do the hard work of studying scriptures. The Holy Spirit in his time will give you deep insight into his word. The second most important counsel I give to you, and number nine on the list, is to live the scripture. The scripture is not just a scholarly, scholarly document. It is not just a literary artwork. It is not just to give you information. It is to change your life. It is giving you counsel from God, instructions from God, promises to claim. And the best way to grow is for you to obey the word of God. That's what Jesus says in John chapter 7 and verse 17. If anyone is willing to do my will, he will know of the doctrine. He will gain deeper insight. In John chapter 12 also, Jesus says, When you have the light, walk in it, lest it becomes darkness to you. So, live the word. And as you live the word, you're not perfect. But living the word will, will force you to understand and appreciate what the Bible writers are going through and what they are saying to you. 
you can you can more easily identify with the apostle peter and what led him to deny christ and how he felt about it and how he must have felt when jesus forgave him living the word is the greatest source of inspiration besides the holy spirit speaking directly to your heart finally and the third of the most important is for you to teach the word i have found in my experience that is while i am expounding the scriptures to others whether on an individual basis or in a small group or even preaching the holy spirit give insight that i got nowhere else but in teaching the word matter of fact as you teach the word it's like you're emptying your cup to get more filling from the holy spirit and so i encourage you to teach the word share it with your family share it with your friends as you read share insight on social media wherever but make sure to teach the word and it will indeed help to deepen your appreciation for the same story that you have been reading over and over again for so many years. So these are the 10 steps and 10 things that you need to do to help you to deepen your ability to gain insight from the word and to make Bible study come alive in your experience. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have not yet done so, I invite you to subscribe to the channel so that you can get more of these insight in helping you to grow in grace, and to deepen your relationship with God. God bless you.